Assalamu alaikum and welcome to tonight's live show on Imam Hussain TV. Last week, we reached a staggering viewer rating. Viewers from all over the world, tens of thousands of people watched the show last week, thanks to our special guest, Dr. Sayyid Amar Nakshwani. The title of last week's show was Islamic Divorce. It was so popular that we've extended the show and a series into a mini-series now to be continued today. We spoke about the rights, abuses, injustices suffered by people, people undergoing divorces, post-divorce, prior to divorce, and so on and so forth. With me tonight, I'd like to welcome once again, Dr. Sayyid Amar Nakshwani. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah. It's a great privilege to have you on air again once again Thank you, me. thank you so um, much. Last week, we reached a phenomenal viewer rating um, audience. Um, Bolivia, Venezuela, Sw Spain, um, Hungary as well. People actually called in, WhatsApped and telephoned and, um, you know, really did um, compliment specifically yourself um, for your uh, inputs and your guidance. Um, so, you know, I'd just like to recap very quickly um, back to last week now. We ended very briefly with the uh, verse of, from the Holy Quran. Uh, Surah Nisa, verse 35, and I'll just read briefly the translation of it. Uh, and if you fear a breach between the two, then appoint a judge from his people, and a judge from her people. If they both desire agreement, Allah will effect harmony between them. Surely, is, surely Allah is knowing aware. So, just to go back quickly, what are the circumstances revolving around arbitration? And then we'll quickly go into the packed schedule tonight, inshallah. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Amir Reza, who's behind the scenes here at Imam Hussein TV, it's the anniversary of the passing away of his father. And so we send our you condolences know, know, you know, to his sure. family. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his father's soul. Arbitration is not easy. No. Um, and in many cases, these arbiters try their hardest to provide guidance and to provide support for this couple who are going through an extremely difficult period. Yeah. Uh, but the arbiter, without a doubt, is someone who has to know the context, not just of what these two have been through in their relationship, but also what are the customs that are bringing happiness to couples living in London, maybe different from the customs that are bringing happiness to couples for example, living in Najaf or Qum. Cool. Yeah. What do I mean by that? I mean, when we're living in London, going out for a romantic meal with your wife, or maybe watching the odd film with her, um, or for example, going on a type of sporty holiday where someone uh, snowboards or jet skis, these are things which are seen as being, for example, fun in Western culture. Absolutely. That arbiter cannot be giving advice on the basis of how he remembers Najaf or Qum used to be yeah. in terms of the relationship that he has with his wife. In many cases, in some of the most traditional Muslim environments, going to the restaurant with your wife mm -hmm. in some of these very traditional conservative cities was even frowned upon. Sure. Some Maulanas could not go to restaurants with their wives for many years. Things may have changed slowly now. I see that sometimes when we're calling two people from the community, if it's two Maulanas, uh -huh. Maulanas have their own worldview about what brings happiness in a marriage. Yes. It's related to what Ahlul Bayt have taught us. And they may give wonderful advice in relation to supplications that are to be recited, for example. But at the same time, I think we need people in the community who can relate mm, to the way. couple socially. Yeah. Absolutely right. Where these two 
can look at them and say, well, where have you gone on holidays? What sporty things do you do together? Where do you go out for meals? Yes, yes. Uh, do you ever impulsively tell her tonight we're going out for a meal or does it have to be planned? Mm. Is your night out something which has become robotic or not? Yeah. Therefore, when the Quran was stressing on arbiters or those who are going to be involved in the arbitration process, the Quran wanted us to not only seek a means of reconciliation, but wanted us to also ensure that the people who are giving the advice right. are not those people who are unaware mm -hmm. of today's social environment or biased, as it were, or, biased yeah. or people who live with the principles of their ancestors. And what do I mean Absolutely. by this? Yes. I remember somebody going through a difficult time with their, with their wife. Right. And it sadly led to a breakup. There were arbiters who were involved. The arbiter for the, for the guy's side honestly didn't have a clue okay. about the laws of talaq. Okay. Was getting mixed up on a number of areas. But that's besides the point. We give that person the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, yeah, sure. The, the arbiter on behalf of the lady's side, on the sister's side, she tells the groom side of the family, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his family, married a difficult wife. So let your son just live with this the way his Prophet lived with. I see. Now, what's that advice? Yeah. Yes, the Prophet, peace be upon him, his family, I can see in Surah Al Ahzab or Surah Al Tahrim mm -hmm. that clearly there are difficult moments, moments with some of his wives. Yeah, There's yeah. no doubt. No doubt about that. Yes. And there are Prophets before the Prophet, peace be upon him, his family, like. Prophet Nuh or like um, Prophet Lord, yes. whose wives actually died, disbelievers. Mm -hmm. But what type of advice are you giving this groom? Yes, we know we want reconciliation, but don't turn around to him and say, your prophet had a difficult wife, therefore you should just continue and remember your prophet. Yes. That's not sound advice. No, 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 it's not, not practical all. advice. Yes. And even sometimes we may go to the Mawlana in our community. And the Mawlana may offer us a lot of wisdom in many areas, but marriage counseling, the way he understood it in Lahore, mm. or in Bangalore, yeah. or in Najaf, or in Qom, is maybe completely different to today. Sure. In, in that time, you could have easily advised somebody that, look, you know what, um, uh, you shouldn't get divorced because the whole community will put a black cross on you. Who's going to marry you afterwards? Yeah. Today, yeah. that's not advice. No, no, no. And, and so arbitration fundamentally must have people who are socially aware, mm -hmm. who are practical, and who give sincere advice, and not advice that fits the mold of the generation right. that they were necessarily raised upon. Okay. And, I, and I believe that the person who's giving the arbitration as well must be aware of the different terminologies which we're going to touch in tonight's Inshallah. show. Inshallah. What is the, you know, when we're talking about the khali'i divorce, when we're talking about Mubarat, yeah. when we're talking about, for example, the idda period, mm -hmm. the divorce mm -hmm. which is, for example, raj'i, ba'in, revocable, irrevocable. Okay. It can't just be anyone who's giving advice. No, no. You could end up ruining a marriage, you could end up ruining a relationship if you are not aware True. of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended when a talaq takes place yes. and whether there are certain means of reconciliation which you have not considered. But we'll touch on inshallah, them slowly, inshallah. inshallah. Thank yeah. you for that. So just to kick off the uh, live show tonight, uh, viewers, the first question we have is... Um, is there, is there a need for a father's permission? Um, and, you know, this actually causes, you know, a lady maybe some problems, as it were, when she wants to marry or not. I mean, why can't we just make these processes just simple and just, you know, have a guardian or guardianship and then it's done? You know, why well, I, I is think, there... I think there's a lot of people who have an issue, especially is um, in the Western world, to age? do with the guardianship issue. Right that there are a lot of girls who got divorced uh -huh. who have, in my opinion, a viable complaint. And that is, why did I need my father's interference when it came to who I wanted to get married to? Mm. Because... You're what, taking away that person's choice. Yes. In effect. In effect. And, and what, what I think you could see within Islamic literature is there is a debate about the guardianship 
right. of that father, for example, when it comes to marriage. Okay. That father can't force you to marry somebody. Okay. And in many cases, the way some fathers are out of love, some because of their wisdom, some because of their experience, some actually made their daughters marry people they never wanted to yeah. marry, but yeah. because it suited the father right. more than it suited the daughter. Okay. Does a Muslim woman therefore necessarily require her father's permission for marriage because in many cases you'll find there are divorces that happen because the, the girl will turn around and say, I didn't want this guy. No. But you guys tried in many ways to persuade me. Yeah. Mind you, it's the opposite as well. Of course. There are those who told their parents, you guys don't know what you're talking about. Let me marry him. Let me marry him. A few years later, yeah, mommy, yeah, daddy, you are right. Sure. But I think we may have to reassess okay. the issue of guardianship and in terms of who one chooses for marriage. Right. Because it's sad when there are certain places which sometimes remind you of Arabia in a minuscule way when it came to, for example, marriage choices, that the fathers would accept the one who gives the highest dowry, yeah, yeah. not the best person for their daughter. True, true. And in some cases, fathers will turn around to their daughters and they'll say, you know, I'm your dad, so I decide who you get married to. In some cases, the advice they give is wonderful. In mm -hmm. some cases, the foresight they have is unique. Yes. In other cases, I think, the lack of independence of some led to divorces because of decisions made more by the families yeah. than by the person. So just themselves. very briefly, uh, is it really revolving around the innocence of a woman or the mental faculty of her understanding or both? I, I think both. Uh, there's yeah. uh, because independence, in, in, I think, Independence should allow one to make their own life decisions. Yeah, yeah. You know, once again, we're fighting the context versus the text. Yes, yes. The context in the world today, it's extremely normal for someone to leave home and work in mm, the city. Absolutely. It doesn't mean they've become immoral. No, no, not at all. Um, whereas in many of our communities, you'll find that there are people who'll turn around and say, that still she needs her father's permission before she gets married to anybody. Yeah. Well. That person who's now independent, earning their own living, father's not paying for anything, why is it that she would require her father's permission um, to engage in a relationship? True. There are some ladies in the Muslim community in their 20s, yeah. in their 30s, mm -hmm. mature enough to be able to make their life decisions. I've always said that our parents' advices are fundamental because many times your mom does prove you wrong in terms True. of decisions that you've made. Yes. But I don't believe that that should shroud mm. the fact that there are many who are independent enough, not to disrespect their parents. No, 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 no. But to maybe marry somebody who's not in the mold of what their parents perceive as amazing. Yes. Some parents may perceive that person has to be doctor <laughs> uh, to be amazing. Whereas, and they think that their daughter should only marry someone who's seen as a doctor in some societies because that's the highest earning person. Yep, yep. What they don't realize is their daughter may have fell in love with somebody who's at a job which is... Just a workaholic. Not, yeah, <laughs> but workaholic and somebody who's going to struggle for the family. And they love each other. Yeah, and and, yeah. and, and they, they get on. Mm. There are many who made their daughters marry people whose status was high. Yes. But there's no click. No, no, no. So I believe the whole idea of, of the guardian making decisions for you for marriage Consultation is, is fundamental, but I think there are divorces that have happened because we went in that type of right. way. Right, yep. okay. Um, with respect to circumstances now, is there a possibility that an individual may take their partner for granted and end up regretting a divorce? I mean, thinking really, you know, trying to rewind and think, say to themselves, should I have stayed, should I stay, what's going to happen, what are the reper repercussions, as it were? There's a tradition of Imam Ali alayhi salam that I'll never Islam. forget. Amir al-Mu'mineen talks about the fact that you should make a hundred excuses for your wife. Should. Yeah. And a um, hundred excuses. In many cases there are men, you know, if their wife had one slip of the tongue and then straight away that was it. You know, yes. that's the end of the relationship. And you end up living with regret because you begin to realize that the grass wasn't green on the other side. side. I think likewise there are ladies who may have left certain men uh -huh. who, like all of us, male, female, all of us are fallible. Mm. We all may make a mistake here and there. Um, and 
And I think people don't realize sometimes what they have until they lose, lose them. It. What I mean by that is, when you hear stories out there of men abusing their wives physically and emotionally, now you may not have had the most charismatic, good-looking guy on earth, but did he ever emotionally abuse you or did he physically abuse you? Maybe an introvert, not an extrovert. Yeah, yeah. But at the end, did you really want to let go of that guy if there hasn't been that? Or he's trying to bring food on the table. I may have struggled at times. May and, have struggled at and times. And you haven't seen it as being good enough. Never laid a finger on you. Never come back drunk. Yeah. Had no relationships on the side. You may have just turned around and thought, well, I want to move on to something else. And mind you, I can appreciate that. Islam appreciates that. Islam is different from Christianity, which has a problem with the idea of divorce, therefore it just annuls and says there was no marriage. Whereas Islam says, no, no, we can appreciate that you could get to a stage where it's mundane, it's just not there anymore. Mm. You find the relationship reprehensible. Sparks uh, gone. Yeah, but, but I think in some case, if you sit back, you'll actually realize that the marriage is not that bad. You know, you, you both have got a house, wonderful kids, yes. cars, Education, family, and God tested you in an area. Did yeah. you really have to give up that quick? Mm -hmm. So I think all of us may have had a regret. And for those who are watching this, I think it's important to realize that, you know, when, when you're about to make that final decision, just sit back and think, you know, I've heard the grass is green on the other side. But if this person hasn't been as crazy as some of the stories you hear out there, then is there a possibility that you could still work on things? Yes, yes, okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, before we continue um, to the questions that actually have come in today already, um, I do urge viewers to actually donate if possible. Imam Hussain TV cannot function without your donations and your support. The telephone number to make donations is 0203 515 you can also telephone uh, via WhatsApp your messages as well. 07939-917-163. Uh, so now just to um, rewind slightly back to last week, we touched upon separation. Um, and is a couple undergoing a period of separation, or really, in effect, in layman's terms, having a timeout, can it be healthy? Yeah, I think... Or is it subject to the time duration? Yeah, I think it's something very underestimated because yeah, you may yeah. end up um, having a divorce without having a period of separation. Right. And I think sometimes that period of separation allows you to cool down. And Always analyze. be careful who's giving you advice okay. Um, okay. when things are going bad. Sure. Um, you might be getting advice from a divorcee who hates the world and everyone that lives in it. Mm -hmm. And she can't wait or he can't wait to tell you, get out, get divorced. You know, this is the best thing that can ever happen to you. Be careful. Right. Not everybody out there who's giving you advice when things are going bad is a person of wisdom or is a person of God consciousness. True, true. There are some out there because of their nasty divorces, hate mankind. Yeah. There are some out there because of their nasty divorces hate womankind. Mm. And if, after last week's show and the staggering number of emails yes. that we received here at Imam well. Hussein TV, it's amazing when you're looking at all those stories and, and when you look at the stories, there are men who hate womankind yeah. and there are women who hate mankind. True. And there are some who will tell you, just finish this off, get out. And there are others who will tell you that, you know what, just calm down. Yeah. Chill. Chill. Don't get in each other's faces for a period. Try and rekindle the friendship mm -hmm. that existed at the beginning. I, I hope there was a friendship that existed at the beginning. Try and rekindle that. And when you can rekindle that, then you know there's still something there. If you can't rekindle that, mm -hmm. then okay. At least you tried. At least you tried. Yeah. And it's not just trying for, for, for mum and dad's sake. No, no, no. You actually try. Hey, there could be kids involved. Don't be so selfish and just walk. And remember, we're not talking about the extreme cases where sometimes you have to walk. Yeah. I'm saying that just sometimes sit back and think, well, these kids are going to grow up in a broken home. Could we just maybe work on things one more time? Yeah. Plead to each other and just say, listen, is there a possibility that before we get this divorce, 
Maybe we just take a period out to see, is the spark still there? Do I miss you? Do you miss me? If it's there from one side, not from the other, okay, one can appreciate. True. But I do think the separation period is something that definitely is needed. You know, okay. sometimes the Quran will say, uh, those of your wives, you may fear there's an indecency from okay. them. Okay. At the beginning, talk to them. If right. that doesn't work, separate the beds. Okay. okay. Maybe you know you go to one side of the bed and she goes to the other. And if that doesn't work, some said wadribuhun means hit them, and we try yeah, to we, prove yes. that this goes against the the actions of Ahlul Bayt who are walking the Quran. Sure. But but also some said that that also means to travel away or separate away from each other. And I think that that could be something which at least gives you that knowledge that, well, we I stayed tried. away, we tried, and it didn't work out. Yeah. yeah, okay. So now moving on to the questions. And so now we've got quite a many questions, as sure. it were. So um, Sister Khadija from um, Kuwait, uh, via email, she's been abused in her relationship, but mm. there was no one will marry her mm -hmm. if she, di I mean, if she divorces. Um, you know, there's difficulty for her to earn, as it were, reliance and so on and so forth. What advice can we give? I wouldn't focus too much yeah. on this idea that if I divorce, who's going to marry me? There's this thing that goes around a lot that, you know what? Lack of faith. Perhaps. Lack of faith, but also, if you're in an abusive relationship, someone's harming you, someone's destroying you. Yeah. Don't turn around and say, but you know what, maybe it's better to stay in here and get beaten black and blue mm. because who's going to marry me after? Not at all. No one. Yeah. In some cases, you're still absolutely beautiful inside out. It's sad when someone like Sister Khadija has to say something like this, but you're, you're still beautiful. There are people out there who, who would be lucky to be with you. Yeah, yeah. And I'm again talking the extreme cases. There are some cases where there can be reconciliation, you can work with each other. But in the extreme cases, I know that there are many out there who just stay in marriages, mm -hmm. either because they don't want to bring a bad rep to their parents. Listen, your parents are not living your life. And the religion of Islam did not say it is wrong for you to find living with your husband as something which you're not enjoying. Yeah, yes, yes. Yes, there are laws related to it, but the religion of Islam was not against the fact that you may not be enjoying this relationship. Mm, don't suffer. Don't su and there are ladies in the life of the Prophet, peace be upon his family, who were divorced and who got married. Zayd and Zainab. Zainab being the cousin of the Prophet, peace be upon his family, and Zayd being his adopted son. Okay. And you've got this clear situation where they don't get on with each other. There could have been a thought from Zainab that who's going to marry me? Yeah. The Prophet, peace be upon him, his family takes it upon himself to marry his cousin. So those who are thinking, well, you know what, if I get divorced, how am I going to earn a living? It's better that this guy just punches me every day and it's better that I just try and remain patient. Mm. No. I I'm sorry to say this because there are too many Muslims who beat around the bush on this issue or hide what's happening in our community. It happens in every religion. It happens true, in every true. culture. I don't Absolutely. care if you're monotheist or atheist. Yep. There are people who have abused their wives in every culture. But don't just sit back and think, well, you know what, actually, I don't want to hurt dad's feelings. Mm. Go to your father and speak to him. Yes. Yes. If it's reached an extreme case. And even if it's not an extreme case and there's no click. Open up. In that situation, open up with your husband. Yeah. Open up and say that, listen, why are we going to hurt each other even more? It's going to become really nasty. Mm. If there's nothing there, then where are we heading? And that's why there are chapters of law called the chapters of talaq, the chapters of, you know, um, the khali'i divorce and the mubarat or the mubara. And, and all of these, that, you know, all of these sections are talking about the fact that you may actually look at each other and you may resent being with one another or one part may resent the other. Yes. So this is something that can happen. Yeah. Yes, okay. Um, so no, I'm not sure if you're aware and uh, viewers as well, but <coughs> there's a sizable community, a Shia community in Argentina as well. Mm, mm, mm. So we've had a, a question from there, from another sister, Sara. Um, she has three children, married to a very arrogant husband. 
Um, unfortunately, there's no sex life. Um, but she's concerned about who will accept the children um, if she wants to move on. So what is your sort of... I can reason? appreciate her concern, yeah. definitely. Mm. Uh, it's not easy to move on when you've got the kids because there's always this thought in, in your mind that there'll be a guy out there who loves me, but then is he willing to take on my kids? Yeah, father them. And, 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 <laughs> and, and there are certain guys out there who are good guys, Mm -hmm. But there is a psychological thing when you're not their dad. You know, they're looking up at you and they're thinking, well, you're never going to be the same as my dad. Sometimes the problem isn't the guy you're going to marry. Sometimes the problem could be your own kids who may look at the person you're marrying and say, well, that person will never repress, uh, replace Baba, you know. Yeah, yeah, will yeah. never be that replacement figure. But once again, if you're with someone who's arrogant, who has... Oh, there's no sex life left anymore. It could be two things. It could either be you've reached an age, for example, where things aren't as great as they used to be when mm -hmm. you were first together, or he's enjoying things on the side. Yeah. You know, he's enjoying um, his, his holidays and his trips and his local whatever, and he's enjoying that on the side, and, and it shows that he's got no interest in you. If he's not maintaining you financially, or he may be, but not maintaining you physically as well, that's yeah. your right as well, then... There, there has to be someone who is called for the arbitration here. Right. Um, it shouldn't be something that you just allow to go on. Why? You know what? I'm with your dad. I'm only with your dad because he's, you know, because you're around. Otherwise, your dad's so arrogant he doesn't speak to me anymore. Then no, the the mom shouldn't be in that. Either the dad fixes up, and the dad makes it clear that I want to work on myself, or I'm sorry, or there's asking for forgiveness. Well, there has to be now a change of the relationship. True. I know some people out there might think, but you're now making the divorce sound so easy. Mm. I'm sad when I see women who live lives where they've been hurt. Yeah. I'm sad when I see that there are ladies out there who've done so much for their families and it's not appreciated. It breaks your heart. It does. Because I'll tell you why it breaks your heart. Because when it happens to your own sister, that's when you realize how difficult it is for others. Yeah. When your own sister has to go through a situation where she's with someone very arrogant or abusive, somebody who's just got no interest, it hurts you. Yes, yes. And so I think the sister thinking, well, I've got kids, how can I move on? The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his family, he taught us a lesson. He married wi widows or he married divorcees. And the fact that they may have had kids did not get in his way. Um Salama, when he married her, Um Salama had a son by the name of uh, Omar. Okay. And Imam Ali later on names his son Omar. Right. After Um Salama's son, Omar bin Muqran. Okay. Um, because people do ask us this question about some of the names of Imam Ali's kids. Yeah, and there absolutely. are great personalities out there who have named uh, these, these names. And Omar bin Muqran was one. And the Prophet, peace be upon his family, doesn't turn around and say, well... Why am I marrying this lady when she's got a kid? I don't want no kid from another wife. You know, it's, it's a real softness in the heart of the Prophet, peace be upon him, his family. Okay. But you definitely don't deserve to live a life with somebody who treats you in a way of arrogance. Yes. That's for sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, we have another um, email question, as it were. The sisters intentionally use an anonymous name. So she said, uh, please use a different name. Uh, please use Zainab. So this sister has contacted the channel and uh, said that she's more religious than her husband. Um, her husband has no interest in going to Majalis or um, sacred places of Ziyara. Um, what, she should do, what should she do? Um, she feels divorce is the best option. Um, what? No, no, divorce is not the best option. Okay. No. I'll be very frank about that. Being more religious than your husband doesn't mean divorce is the next step. Okay, so viewers do please... This is, this um, is fundamental to the viewers. I, I have to repeat yeah, this. Yeah. I may have an interest in going to Majalis. I have an interest in taking the kids to the Madrasa. I have an interest in going Ziyara. The husband doesn't. When you first got married, the two of you, weren't you on the same playing field? Hmm. Just because you're now a bit faster in your development, the ethical thing wouldn't be to leave. The ethical would be to take the hand 
and try and move forward together. Sometimes there are husbands. It's not that they're anti ziyar. Yeah. It's not that they're anti um, majalis. Sometimes the majalis that they listen to, they're bored of. Mm. They're listening to someone speak and they're just thinking, not being motivated. What's this guy on? Yeah. It just doesn't relate to me. That husband is not the fact that he's not interested in majalis. Because that same husband, there may be one or two speakers he is in awe of. He loves their lectures. Then you may have a husband, you're like, he doesn't go ziyara. He doesn't go ziyara because the ziyara group that's taking him mm -hmm. is not explaining to him, for example, where are we? What's the history of this place we're going to? It's just, you know what? Get to the ziyara place. Pick up Mafatih, page 441. Okay, here's some masa'ib in five minutes. Okay, let's move on. Yeah, yeah. True. Therefore, when you're saying your husband is anti-majalis or anti... It's different from someone whose husband is now with having entertaining these thoughts of atheism and so on. That's a different story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's stick to the, to the facts on this particular area. True. I've seen cases where I've met families... SubhanAllah, I, I met one a couple of days ago in London. And he, he just blatantly said it. He's like, listen, I, I don't go to lectures. The only ones I listen to are yours. Fair he just blatantly said that. Now, when he's saying that, with all due respect to others who are giving lectures and so on, some might perceive what he's just said as someone who's antagonistic towards lectures and majalis. No. He's just like, listen, when I want to come and listen to a lecture, there's a certain way I want it de delivered. There's yeah, a certain yeah. style. There's a certain depth. True. I want some sort of relationship, as it were. Yeah, I don't want the Maulana to look at me as like some six-year-old in the crowd. Yeah, yeah. I want the Maulana to actually treat me as if I'm a, 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 someone who is educated and he wants to take me even further in my development. Therefore, if there is a lady out there and that lady sees that she is now going to these Tuesday night tafsir, Thursday night majalis, Saturday night, this community, and she feels that her husband... It's not so active. Don't forget the fact that that husband doesn't mind you going to these. True. That's a baraka. I, that is a rizq. He's giving you that freedom. When that husband's saying, mm. go, enjoy mm. these. I don't mind. Let the kids go to the madrasa. Don't straight away think divorce. Yeah. N someone might naturally want to be with a husband who they think, you know what, this guy, he'll chat with me because he's like, he loves religion. I myself. I myself. My wife, I'm not going to be speaking to her 24-7 about the, the, the Damascan glitterine of Shaheed al-Awwal or Majlisi's Bihar or mm. Kulaini's mm. al-Kafi or, you know, the Makasib or, for example, you know, Man la yadarahu al -faqih. No. I'm going to try and speak to her about Liverpool Football Club. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to talk with her about... Football. I'm going to tell her how crazy I am at football. I'm going to discuss with her what she's studying. I'm going to discuss with her, um, you know, what's on the telly, for example. And she, likewise, when she's always speaking to me, she loves that conversation. You know, she enjoys uh, the fact that there are times where we can talk about religion, or we talk about sports, we talk about, you know, we talk about what's happening in the media and politics and so on. People may imagine that... My wife would be somebody who's going to be listening to me talk about the Qur'an and the Ahl al-Bayt 24-7 at home and I can't wait, let's go to Ziyara and Umrah. No, no, not at all. And there's a balance. True. There's a balance. You have to have that balance. Yeah, and so when you've got that husband who's not that religious. So Abdullah bin Ja'far al-Tayyar is, is a well-known erudite personality. Mm -hmm. Sayyidah Zainab never once tells him, I'm Ali's daughter. No. I'm... Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam No. One may argue that she may have been on a level higher. Higher. Maybe. Perhaps. But you know what she found in him? There's, there's lovely traits of generosity in mm. him. Oh. There are other husbands out there. They will go, they'll do du'as and majalis and so on. The stingiest humans you will find. My partner may be somebody that lady will say, I keep telling him Majah so on. But when you want generosity, the first to donate. The first to help build the mosques. 
the first to help fund another person's ziyara if they can't go on ziyara. Therefore, don't look at that person and think that the exterior, exterior religiosity is the most important. Rather, turn around and look at some of the wonderful ethical traits they have which believe you me, earlier someone asked about arrogance. Having an arrogant husband, mm -hmm. but who goes ziyara. Yes. I would throw that away to have a partner who is somebody humble, but generous. Generous. Great with the parents. Down to earth. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go to all the majalis. Yeah. And how many are at Majalis these days, who are people who sadly have left black dots and black marks on their families. Yeah, lives. okay, alhamdulillah. Um, so now we've just got about four minutes until we go to another break. So um, moving on uh, swiftly, um, could you please define khullah, as it were? Um, why do some see why do some women seek it, as it were? Um, what does it actually entail, uh, khullah? The khal'a divorce, mm. because I know that many will, will talk of khul'a, the, the khal'a divorce is a divorce where the woman finds living with her husband as something which does not bring her any more happiness. Distress. She resents being distress. around him. Okay. She, there's distress when she's around him. She can't stand him. Maybe she can't stand the way he looks. Right. Could be as simple as that. But the, the, the issue is directly with the husband. Right. Okay. For, a, for the khal'a divorce. Mm-hmm. And um, when you're looking at this particular divorce, you're finding that the lady doesn't like, for example, the look of the husband, the manners of the husband, the akhlaq of the husband, and so on. When she doesn't, then there is a certain sum that right. she pays. She has to pay that. She pays. The sum of what is seen as, for example, the dowry that's given back to the husband. Okay. Yeah. So, for example, the husband paid $750 dowry. Mm -hmm. And when the husband paid $750 dowry, she can give back that $750. All of it? All of it. Not partial. She gives back the $750. Now, husband may be somebody who agrees to waive. Husband may be somebody who can also charge more. Uh -huh. In the Mubarak divorce, which we will come to, both of you find the relationship you can't stand each other anymore. It's not one-sided. So there's a consensus, as it were. Right? Yeah. So in the in the Khal'i divorce, you have reached a stage where your the wife doesn't want to be with the husband. In the Mubarak, that is now a stage where both of you don't want to be with each other. The wife wants a divorce. In that one. You stick to the limit of what's been spent on you. Okay, so now we're just going to end just there. Um, viewers, uh, do join us again in the next couple of moments, inshallah. I'm just going for a short break. And also to um, call in for your questions and donate if you can. 0203 515 0199 is the telephone number. Telephone number for WhatsApp questions is 07939 917 163. Back shortly, inshallah. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to tonight's program on uh, Islamic divorce. Sayyidina, assalamu alaikum. Um, just prior to the break, we, you briefly touched upon khullah, uh, as it were. I hope I've pronounced it correct. Um, just going and continuing to that, on that 
topic. Yeah, let me just continue. Uh, yeah, yeah, please, and, and the discussion on that. What you have is that many people ask this question that how can a Muslim woman get divorced? And normally the unilateral right for divorce is given to the male. man. And this, I believe, brings about a lot of injustice. Hmm. Um, it's certainly not mentioned Quranically that the man is the only one who has right for divorce. And um, I think it's even open to question in the world of hadith. Okay. And there are many women who are treated unjustly in marriages because the man will turn around and say, well, I'm not giving you a divorce. What are you going to do about it? Mm. Let the Mawlana call me. Let your family beg me. I'm not giving you a divorce. And I believe that that whole area is open for debate. That the woman should have as much unilateral right as the man to be able to divorce. Now, there are certain types of divorces okay. where a woman can get out of a relationship. And we mentioned the Khali'i divorce yeah. and we mentioned Mubarak. As we said with the Khali'i divorce, what happens is that I, for example, look at my husband. I'm going to be as blatant as possible. True. I can't stand the fact that my husband smells bad okay. or I can't stand the fact that my husband, for example, is bald. That's, that's my only reason. No, I can't stand the in-laws or I can't stand the house we live in. Otherwise, the Khali'i cannot be completed. I see. The Khali'i has to be completed. Because, you know, it's even, it's, it's, the statement for the Khali'i divorce is not anti taliq for example. You are divorced. Right. There is Khali'atuki. Okay. Or Mukhtali'a. anti Mukhtali'a. Which, which means that now there is this separation that takes place. Okay. At a certain payment. Now, what is that? I, as the husband, you're telling me that I'm bold, you don't like me. Or you're telling me that I'm fat. You don't like me. I don't smell nice. You don't like me. I've spent money on you in this relationship. You resent me. I can appreciate. You want to move on? I can appreciate. However, I've spent money on you. Mm -hmm. Give me back the amount, which on the minimum, let's say, for example, is the dowry. Right. You give me that dowry back, you have your divorce. They are also the husbands entitled to ask for more than that dowry amount. So if the dowry amount, for example, is 2,000 pounds, let's say. Mm -hmm. If that's the dowry amount, then a person could turn around and say to the wife, you don't like me? Okay. I don't want to live with someone who doesn't like me. I'm not going to beg you. Give me my 2,000, for example, that my family gave your family on that day, and move on. There's a problem with the Khali'i divorce. It's irrevocable. In which sense? Normally, when there's a divorce, yeah. normally, their divorce is revocable, because in the Idda period, which we'll discuss, discuss shortly. Discuss, inshallah. Now, when someone gets divorced, there is an adda period. <laughs> Say three menstrual cycles, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. or three months for the one who doesn't menstruate. And so, normally if I get divorced with somebody, there is this period in which we can reconcile. With the khal'i divorce, or the, I see many commonly call it khul'a. Okay. With that divorce, it is irrevocable. Unless... Right. The wife gives back what's being given to her and the husband then takes her back. That's the only... Right. Otherwise, it can't be the same as the revocable divorce. Because, right. you know, they, they make a separation in the world of Islamic law between a divorce which is revocable mm -hmm. and irrevocable. Raj'i right. and ba'in. Okay. Raj'i divorce... It's the common one. Me and the missus haven't got on. We've gone to Mawlana. Mawlana's done the talaq. There's been two witnesses there. Three menstrual cycles later, if I haven't touched her, if there's no intention of return, 
she moves on. However, if there is an intention of a return, mm -hmm. then we can come back with each other. Yeah. There are certain divorces where you cannot come back. Right. For example, I divorced my, my missus once, we got back together. Divorced yeah. her twice, got back together. Yeah. Third time I divorced, we cannot get back, back together. together. You know, remember when Imam Ali Islam said, I've divorced this dunya three, three times, times. Yes. of which there is no return? Third time when, you know, first time me and Mrs. divorced and then, you know what, we're like, ah, come on, I love you, you know what, let's get back home. Okay, we can come back home. Second time, you know what, this is over, but we come back again. Third time, third talaq, divorce. divorce. That's one. The mm -hmm. other one is the khali'i divorce. Right. But the khali'i divorce, in the idda, if your husband had given you, a, uh, you had given your husband a certain amount, if you give it back to them, and they can take you back during the idda. Okay. So that's with the khali'i. Okay. With the mubarad, the mubarad divorce, the woman doesn't like the husband, but husband also doesn't like her. Right, okay. okay. So it's not one way. No. It's two ways. Okay. I don't like the husband, husband doesn't like me, but there is a, a cap okay. on the amount that is given. Right. Whereas in the khali'i, he could even ask 15 times the amount that the mahar was because he's like, listen, I spent all these years. You think now that I'm ugly mm -hmm. or you don't like me anymore? Okay, give me back some of the payment that I spent on you all these years and I'm getting out of your life. And what happens, let's just, just put it out there. <clears throat> Not using the word nasty, but just say that someone is being a bit difficult and he demands something and he's not going to get it. Well, we know there's a whole surah in the Quran called Surah Al-Talaq. Hmm. That surah says either you know you stay with each other respectfully or you let each other go in peace. And don't make someone other. hang on. Okay. The okay. muallaqa, the one who's, you know, they, they keep her hanging on. Okay. It's not right, listen, but no. if the relationship's over, just end it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, so we've got um, a WhatsApp question. Salams, I have a question regarding my nikah and idda. I have been married for 17 years, have no relationship with my husband for past 14 years. I live with him, but we sleep in separate rooms. Is my nikah valid? And if I want to go for a divorce, what kind of divorce will it be? Uh, will idda be wajib on me? I don't have any children. Yes, he's having other relations. Okay, let's work on this. They have not had... Mm -hmm. Sex for what? 14 years? 14 years. Doesn't make a difference. When they had sex mm -hmm. in the beginning of the relationship would mean that an idda would be the idda period. Okay. Uh, idda period of the three menstrual cycles. Mm -hmm. uh, she would have to observe. Uh, the, f the fact that the husband is not maintaining her rights physically you can go to Hakim al Shara, for example. Or you can ask for the khul'a. Or if the husband is clearly having affairs outside of marriage, it means that the, both of you, there's no more interest in each other. Right. He's elsewhere, you're elsewhere. And in that case, even the, the Mubarak divorce can be done as well. Right. Um, so yeah. Okay. Idda would still have to be observed. Okay. Even now, some of the viewers may say, mm -hmm. I got divorced last month. We haven't had sex for two years. Is there still an Idda? Because they say Idda is normally to verify there's a pregnancy. We haven't had sex for two years. The other reason there's an Idda is to see maybe that you two may reconcile. Reconcile, yeah. Idda... When there's a divorce, many families do not know this point. Okay. And that is, when your son or your daughter has divorced, in those few months, for example, mm -hmm. they still have the right to go back to their marriage. marriage. And when they have the right to go back to their marriage, don't stop them. That three-month period, three menstrual cycle period, that period was there from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not just to verify if there's a child. Give you a second chance. Give you a second chance. Okay. Uh, 
My name is Mohammed. Salam to myself. He's referring to Anne Sayyid Amal. My question is, if a couple do not have contact with one another for more than six months, meaning no physical contact or speaking or seeing one another, are they automatically divorced? No. Nope. And what should they do afterwards if one wants to get married to another person? They are not automatically divorced. Right. Not at all. Okay. If someone does not have sex with their partner for two years, they are not automatically divorced. There is this misconception that if someone has not had sex with their partner for four months, mm -hmm. then it's divorce. No, not true. You should never leave it longer than four months. Okay. But otherwise, you would still have to go through the divorce procedures um, if you want to get divorced. Okay. Um, <laughs> Salam, brother. My name is R. Zahra. I have a question about Sayyid Shia girls who are, who are not allowed to marry with non-Sayyid boys. Is this in our religion? That's the question. And please, I want you to talk about this top topic. Yeah, this is uh, only in India and Pakistan. Mm. Only. No way. And India and Pakistan has some of the most passionate Shia in the world and some of the ones who have given the most to Ahlul Bayt in their history. But on this area, they seem to find it extremely sensitive. Okay, yeah. right. Uh, we'll come back to more questions on uh, Hula. Um, but the questions are coming in uh, quite fast now. Salam, if someone has a kid from a random Christian girl, let's say a one night stand, and they never got married, and she doesn't want to know about Islam, uh, what do they say? Um, is it haram? Is, is it something bad for the kid? What, is, what if the kid becomes Muslim one day? You had sex with a random Christian girl. And we don't want to say random. I don't want to you mm. know, belittle anybody by using words such as random. You had sex with somebody, you have a kid, look after the kid. Right. Um, don't, you know, don't go out there and have relationships and then when there's a kid you want to run away. Okay, okay. So let's just go back to uh, Hulla, as yep. it were. Can you return to the husband? Can a wife return to the husband during the idda of a Hulla divorce? If she gives the money back mm -hmm. and the husband then takes back from there and accepts, yes. Okay, That's right. The one. Yeah. Um, we've just got just over 20 minutes, so yep. you know, quite a lot of questions to get through. Do offices of the Maladja actually help? Uh, I mean, some actually think that, you know, Sometimes these offices are disinterested or, or are their affairs or, you know, the complaints are moved one office to another office. Um, what, what can be done about this, as it were, to sort of harmonise that uh, office, process? An, an office in any institution always has people who try their hardest to serve you. And there are people who may be negligent in their duties. If I now go to a big bank in London... Mm. There's somebody in the customer services of the bank who will work diligently on my case, running around back and forth to help me resolve my financial issue. And there's somebody who looks like they've had the worst day in their life and they want to help. Yeah. And I think likewise when it comes to some of the offices of our mosques and Islamic institutions, mm -hmm. it works like that as well. Okay. There are certain people who are extremely helpful. They go out their way to listen to so many marriage cases and divorce cases in their communities. And there are others Maybe you caught them on a bad day if I give benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Okay. Um, in addition, can you please advise what Hakim and Sharia is? Um, what, what, what exactly is it? Well, if you've got a, a marja out there and the marja has representatives, say you have the marja's rep who can interfere in your divorce case where no one's listening to you, your husband financially is not looking after you, your mm -hmm. husband is not keeping in touch even with you, and in many cases, many women did not know who to go to because then when they tell the husband, the husband's like, I'm not doing anything about this. The marja may have a rep, for example. That marja's rep may be in London. You go to the marja's rep okay. and that person will call him. Once he verifies that this person truly is not trying to maintain contact or is not looking after the duties <coughs> that a husband has to look after, yeah. he can uh, arrange for that divorce to take place. Right. It's not some random, you know, any Tom, Dick and Harry who could do this, by the way. Hakim al -Shara has assigned certain people, for example, who have that authority on his behalf.
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so ultimately, just extending that point, what are the rules around Hakim Masharia for a husband and wife? I mean, for example, if the husband has been abusive, can, can this take place without the husband knowing? If the hus the only way it can take place without the husband knowing is if the husband blatantly doesn't answer anyone's calls. Right. And then at that moment, the rep of that marja can annul and ensure that the divorce takes place. Annul it? Yeah, the divorce is, he can do the divorce. He gets his two witnesses, okay. and those witnesses ensure that it's done. But I think the best way is to talk with the person. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. <clears throat> A person should try their hardest to talk with somebody. And if you find somebody cursing you on the other end of the phone, then you can only imagine what his wife's been through. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, with regards to Idda now, um, why is there an Idda period um, in Islamic fiqh? You know, in terms of, uh, is, is a husband responsible for his wife in Idda period? When you divorce your wife in that revocable divorce, mm. you're still meant to look after her food and clothing. Okay. I think there's a misconception in our communities where people think that when you divorce a girl, you've got to kick her out of the house. Right. No, you don't. Give her shelter. <clears throat> give her food. Give her clothing. Until that Idda period is finished. Okay, okay. Yeah. So Just that Idda period is either there to verify if she's pregnant. pregnant as you mentioned, yeah. Or reconciliation. Or reconciliation. Maybe right. the two of them miss each other. Okay, okay. You so know, in that period, and you know, if in that period you miss each other, all it takes is a touch and you're back together. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so staying on, we've got a question on uh, Idda. So just before we get to that, um, can there be sexual relations in Idda between the husband and the wife? Yeah, the moment you, you, the moment you touch each other and the, you're back together, you know, the intention is there of return and, okay. and you're back together again. Okay. <laughs> in the revocable. Yeah. Right. So, you know, Salam, what if the Idda period is not observed by the woman after the divorce is granted and she has relations with another person? What then of the divorce? As a precaution, the person... She has... So, there's a woman in her Idda period mm -hmm. and she... But she's not observing it. So she's had sex with somebody else? Yes. In the Idda period? Yeah. As a precaution, that person becomes haram for her to marry. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and naturally, I'm assuming, because... Can a, can a husband and wife live together in the Idda? As, as yeah, yeah, of course. The Quran yeah. talks about the fact that, you know, uh, you, you look after your wife in that, in, when you've got divorced. It shouldn't be a case of, look, I can understand if we're going to be very real. Mm. You're probably both so angry with each other and you just want to get, you don't want to see each other's faces. But obligatory on the husband is that he has to maintain his wife in the Idda period. Okay, okay. Yep. So now you may have answered this, but I'll just put it out there um, because... Viewers have asked me to actually ask you this. Um, can there be a divorce with no idda? Can there be a divorce with no idda? Two cases. The first case, if, there's, if you've not had sex with your wife, so there's no idda for her because no chance of pregnancy whatsoever. And the second is if the lady is above 60. Okay. Because the menstrual cycles won't apply. Right. Uh, so those would be the two cases where there's no idda. Right. Yeah, 60 menopause and when it comes to the other one, somebody you've got married but you've had no sex, there's no idda for the girl. Okay. Yep. Quite an interesting but important question, I believe. Um, can a woman move in with her future husband um, when she's divorced? Can she still want? Can she move in? with her future husband, already being divorced, but still observing Idda from the ex-husband. No, 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 no. While somebody is in Idda, they cannot be in any other relationship, Period. such as Mut'a, right. such as marriage. You cannot have an Islamic marriage or a Mut'a, temporary marriage. And sex, if you have sex, with somebody while you are still in the idda of talaq as a precaution it is haram for you to then marry them right so we've another question uh, Mona 
she wants to know, um, and she's used as, uh, also an um, anonymous name, as it were, so the Mono isn't her name. Um, if, albeit having sexual intercourse with her husband, she was in Idda of ex-husband, um, can they marry each other? No, precaution. As I said earlier, it's haram. Right. Yeah. Um, then there are other maraja who may say toba, repentance, mm -hmm. but it's really frowned upon. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, the circumstances surrounding a sister who wants to reconcile, as it were, uh, with her husband, but the parents do not like him. What, what are the sort of... What's the Get the somebody to speak that? to your parents. Okay. Get somebody wise from the community to have a word. If you still love your husband, mm -hmm. and some people fall into this trap that, you know what, I want to go back to my, to my partner, but my parents don't like my partner, so I'm not going to go back. But I love my partner, and I miss my partner. Then... Don't give up on your partner. Okay. You know, okay. try your hardest to find somebody in the community who's going to be able to give good advice at that moment. Right. Okay. Is it recommended to marry um, a divorcee? Uh, I mean, what happens if, for example, emotionally that lady may have been hurt? Um, what, are, what are the sort of thoughts around that? You know, uh, your kisma wasn't somebody else's. Right. Right. It was written for you, not for that person. Mm -hmm. It can happen. And what sort of divorcee, for goodness sake, a divorcee's killed somebody? Yeah. Yeah, divorcee it happens to people, maybe get married too young, too naive, you know, immature, and they regret it later on what they've done, and they moved on, and they matured, and they're great people. And so I think, you know, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, he married divorcees. And whatever he does, we try and follow in the best of ways. Okay, yeah. okay. So the, a brother has contacted <coughs> us. Um, it's quite a serious um, issue, um, so it should be treated with um, sensitivity, as, as it were. He's contacted us from Pakistan. Yes. Um, and has a, a, you know, a, a dysfunction, as it were, an erectile dysfunction uh, with his wife. But his wife thinks that he doesn't love her. Um, but he does. And... Um, you know, the community that he's from actually views this issue as being taboo. Should they divorce? No, 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 no way. This is a question no straight from him. Problem is, in our communities, is that if you do have dysfunctions physically mm. related to your sex lives, many men are too scared to admit it. Even though there are phenomenal doctors out there who can really help you. <clears throat> and then what happens is that the wife begins to think either he's enjoying himself somewhere else, which is the biggest nightmare you can have as a husband yeah. if your wife first thinks that, or the wife thinks, well, maybe he's not attracted to me. Whereas that husband may have too much on their plate, mm -hmm. their mind may be somewhere else, etc., etc. And so <clears throat> don't, don't let go of this relationship. Mm. Just because your community may frown upon this. There's many areas the community frowns upon, but it's your love, it's your marriage, it's your future. Tell your wife openly, that, listen, I just feel, I'm going through periods of stress at the moment, I find that I'm not maybe sexually performing, as a, and it's got nothing to do with you. I've got to reflect on myself, but help me out, talk to me. And you'll find that many wives are the most supportive. True. They're the yes. first to stand up for you and to be alongside you and say, listen, no problem at all, because it could be the other way. Yeah, yeah. And how could it be the other way? Sometimes, the wife may not be as responding to your needs and that's because she's carrying a lot in her life which means she's not all there and she wants to tell you that, listen, I love you but I'm just finding that there's just too many things which emotionally are affecting me at the moment. There needs to be that communication. Okay. You know, and the Quran wanted us to have mercy and tranquility with each other. You know, there has to be a merciful nature to ourselves when we're talking with each other about these things. So I advise the brother there in Pakistan that brother don't divorce simply because you've got this issue. <clears throat> and if you love your wife and your wife loves you, don't even let her think, well, what's his problem? Is it me? Mm. Open up. Yeah. Open up and say that I've got this issue and you, it can be worked on with the help of the medical doctors and ultimately supplication as well. Absolutely, this, absolutely. Okay. Asalaamu Alaikum. Uh, 15 years ago, when I was 16 years old, I was, I, I was engaged forcefully by the family of mine and his. The Maulana read permanent nikah for us. 
instead of temporarily until we actually got married. This engagement last, lasted a few months and I broke up my engagement without having any sexual relationship. Currently, I am single, but my question is, am I still considered to be his wife because we did not go to Marlana to read our divorce? She was engaged for... No, no, she, she was involved in a marriage. Mm. And she... The Marlana was, read the permanent nikah. Yes, there would have to be a talaq. Yeah. There would have to be a talaq recited. Just close it off, as it were. No, no, talaq would have to be recited. I, I, I'm, I'm in disbelief how... If it was mut'a, then it's normal. Yeah. There's no, no talaq to be recited. But if there is a permanent marriage, there would have to be a talaq recited. If she sends us the details, we'll try and Inshallah, help resolve the issue. Yes, please do try and um, discreetly email um, your um, question or issue. You can also call in again. The telephone number is 203 515 um, Now, there's another question here. Um, um, there's, it's a little bit staggered, as it were. The, um, ah, I think um, it's the same person. Currently, he is a married man and having his own children. Um, there was no sort of relationship between us um, after I broke up with him. So there's been a break, but as you mentioned... And yeah, there would have to be a talaq recited. I just don't know what's happened with that. Right. We would have to listen uh, to it further. Right, yeah. okay. Um, I have an urgent question for Sayyid Nakshwani. Uh, I'm messaging from Pakistan. I was married for 12 years. 10 of those years I spent trying to get a divorce. My husband wasn't Shia, but we had a Shia nikah. He finally sent me the divorce papers. Am I divorced through Sharia? Is the legal divorce enough for me to move on? So, so the, the talaq was done. It was a, uh, married to obviously someone from another school Shia. in Islam. Yeah, so another mother. We had a Shia nikah. Yes, yes, the talaq counts. It's okay. Talaq right. is done. Yeah, so this is enough to me. If a Shia girl is married to a Sunni boy, mm -hmm. Shia lady married to a Sunni man, yes. and they done the talaq according to Ahl sunnah they don't have, for example, witnesses there, the talaq is valid. Okay, yep. right. Um, same person, I believe. Um, it was my first pregnancy and my husband was insisting I get an abortion. Should this alone be a reason to get a divorce? Abortion... If the mother's life is in danger, is allowed in Islam. Okay. And if not aborting will bring unbearable harm, then it's allowed in Islam at a certain period of which there is debate and discussion. So we would have to review the case and see what the circumstance was. Sometimes a person looks at such moments and should seek repentance from God. Okay. But it's not enough for divorce. Okay. Um, salams. Does the husband still have to pay maintenance to the wife after the Idda period? And if so, for how long? And if they have children, does husband still have to pay maintenance? Inshallah, in the next show, mm, inshallah, we're, we're going to have a complete dissection of what happens with the kids after the divorce and custody of them. Yep. Right. Um, salam, brother. I have a question. Is it okay for an older woman to marry a younger man? As a prophet did marry Bibi Khadija, but due to the community issues, please, should we keep away from this? So, nah, not at all. You're attracted to someone older than you, and you feel that there's a click there, then why not? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, now, just going back to the, the schedule for tonight, um, a caller called in, um, Asif, and uh, his friend, in a moment of anger, um, said talaq three times to his wife. Does this annul the marriage? Shia, no. Hmm. Other schools in Islam, maybe. Okay. Because sometimes, because when people hear, if you say talaq, 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 then it's a divorce. So for Shia, there's no such thing that, you know, a person in a fit of anger, he just turns around and says talaq, talaq, talaq to the wife, the wife can just go and tell him this and just go watch some football. Okay. Um, other schools in Islam, there are many cases where they did that and they regretted it. And they, in some cases, had to believe that, well, she would have to go and marry somebody. And then after she divorces that person and completes the idda, only then can she come back to them. For us, no. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, what happens if, <coughs> um, if a sister marries someone else? Um, can the first husband take his ex-wife back? If the sister marries? Marries someone else. Um, can the first husband take his ex-wife back? So there's been a divorce. Um, can she marry someone else? You know, so it's a little bit vague. I, I believe it's in relation to the idda, as it were. So if she's within the idda, she, she clearly can't marry another man. No. When you're in, a, in the idda, you cannot be in a temporary or permanent relationship with any other person. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. There's one question here. Um, the sister hasn't emailed, uh, emailed her name, but it's quite a disturbing question. Um, my, my husband, and it's quite a, a sad um, case, I think. Uh, I think I'm sure everyone will agree. My husband divorced me an hour before I gave birth. When does my idda end? My husband divorced me an hour before I gave birth. When does the idda end? end? As soon as you give birth. Done. Finished. Right. As soon as she gives birth, idda's done. All finished. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, viewers, do call in um, to actually pose your questions. The telephone number is 0203 515 0199. You can also WhatsApp your questions 07939. 917163, inshallah. Um, Sayyidina, just going back to the topic now, um, we discussed quite a bit today, as it were. Um, now, in, in relation to the divorce, as it were, um, what I'd like to ask is what should be the. I know we're going to actually encounter a number of different cases, as it were, next week, as it were, mm. we'll continue this. But if we've spoken about Hulla. We've spoken about other cases, as it were, of divorce as well. There's a, a particular verse in the Holy Quran, um, if I can just go back to it. Um, Surah Nisa 129, you spoke briefly about Mu'allaqa. Mu ah. If you can just briefly just touch upon that again. Mu'allaqa is, is a very sad, sad situation for any human being. Right. And what that is, is... You've got this very arrogant husband who knows that divorce is in their hands. And that's why I always claim there has to be a review of... You mean a control, as it were, that he can... Yeah, well, you know, I, he can just call for a divorce to happen. And clearly this person abuses this in a very unjust manner. How do they abuse it in an unjust manner? They mm -hmm. just turn around to their wife and they say to her, listen... Go and beg me. Go and beg your parents. I'm not giving the talaq. And if I don't give the talaq, you're not getting the talaq. You do want to get a talaq, I'll charge the highest payment for you on the khal'i. So that's not going to happen. Okay. So the mu'allaqa in some cases has to wait 5, 10, 15 years. Really? Really. Because the husband utilized their power. Imagine the maulana is the husband's family's best friend. Imagine you're living in a town. And the Mawlana is the husband's family's best friend. The husband in front of that Mawlana is going to say, Mawlana, sir, I'm very close with her. I love her. Don't let her. Gets home, it tells her, you see? You really thought that Mawlana was going to help you guys? Right. And so the Quran says, do not leave them attached or, or hanging. Mm. Okay, okay. Don't leave them hanging. Yeah. Habibi, either live peacefully or let them go. Yeah. And sadly, we have many cases in the world today where... Husbands have been so arrogant with the wife saying that, listen, if you are going to have a divorce, I take the kids. And we're going to discuss that next week. Inshallah. What happens with the kids? Yes. Yeah. That can you really take a child away from the mother at the age of two? Is this something just? We'll discuss that further in the next show. But the Mu'allaqa, like I said, the Quran is very against those who leave a lady hanging because it, they want to hurt her. It's, and it's a form her. of oppression. Yeah. It is, of course. Of course. Uh, you know, Islam is meant to be a practical religion. Yeah. And it's meant to have come to bring ease and not hardship. And in moments like this, you'd think it brings hardship and not ease with its followers' behavior. Okay, okay. We have uh, one last question. Um, it's just in relation to maintenance again. 
Um, how long does the husband have to pay maintenance? I know obviously, and a lot of people would have probably abuse the system or probably will quote from British or Western law and so on and so forth, but just in terms of maintenance. Maintenance in the idda period, the husband would have to maintain his wife. And, no, and children? And maintain the children, Until, of course, well, majority. No, uh, you know, they are his responsibility. Right. Um, try and maintain them that whole period. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, outside of that idda period with the wife, if the wife is the one who's looking after the kids, which we'll discuss in our next show, then there would have to be maintenance there because the kids are living with her. And then we'll discuss the ages and so on. Okay. Um, thank you so much. My pleasure. Indeed. Thank uh, you. Excellent. Uh, viewers, that's all we uh, have time for right now. But inshallah, do join us again next week, which will be the third part of this um, topic of Islamic divorce. Um, I do urge viewers to call in. And if you could kindly donate as well by telephoning 0203 515 0199 and also WhatsApp your questions 07939 917 163. From Dr. Sayyid Amar Nakshwani and myself, Muhammad Ali. Asalaamu Alaikum. Hey.